So you remember the movie Field of Dreams? Remember yeah. Kevin Costner, right? He's playing Ray, who gets a, a voice that says to him, if you build it, they will come, right? And so in the middle of this farm, he, a cornfield, he hollows out a beautiful baseball diamond. And after he's got it done and the lights are off, all of a sudden in the movie from out of the cornfields come these old baseball players from many years old who are, we are presumed they're understand to be dead. And one of them in particular we learn as the movie goes on is actually Kevin Costner, Ray's father, the catcher. And Ray, we learn, never had a good relationship with his father. That they never played cats together like so many men and women and their kids do. And so, near the end of the movie, Kevin asks his father, Ray asks his father if they could play catch. And in a very poignant scene in the movie, his father is standing there and he's looking around at this beautiful scenery and the baseball stadium. And he says to Ray, he says, is this heaven? Have you ever had a moment like that? When time just seemed to stand still? When it seemed so full of something beyond yourself that it, it lifted you up and it had this meaning and affirmation and grace to it and God was in it and you found yourself saying the same thing. Is this heaven? Celtic Christianity calls those places thin spaces. They, they came to believe that uh, there was really only three feet difference between heaven and earth. And every once in a while that three feet difference would grow closer and closer and closer until every once in a while you found yourself in a thin space where it was sure you were in the presence of God. This Emmaus story that Carolyn and I read for you is, I think, about a thin space. And often, these Emmaus experiences are part of our lives together. We're in a series and called Jesus Out of the Box. And when we're looking at what does it take to become a radical, passionate, intentional, risk-taking, extravagant person of faith. And we began at Easter because what could be more out of the box been thinking, great, he's dead, it's all over, that's it. God's saying, hey, don't put a period where I intended a comma. And life comes even out of death. And today, this Emmaus Road experience, they're walking along, Jesus is with them, but they do not recognize him. How many times in our lives do we, reckon, do we relate to that place? And as they go and eventually invite Jesus with radical hospitality to stay with them, all of a sudden in the breaking of the bread, their eyes are open and they're like, whoa, remember all those things he said and how it touched us. They found themselves in a thin place. I think we know those places, not unlike them. Maybe our lives are overwhelmed and distracted and, and burdened with pain and, and frustration and confusion and grief and despair. And just like they felt. But the thing about thin spaces, we become people who welcome thin spaces and grow as radically passionate, intentional, risk-taking, extravagant followers of Jesus when we welcome thin spaces, because at its heart, every thin space is our heart welcoming a very encounter with Jesus. With Jesus. And sometimes it's like he's been with us all along. And then a thin space happens, and we go, wait a minute. He was with me all along. Even when I was grieving the deepest, he was with me. Now we can welcome thin spaces, I believe, in three basic ways. Welcome this encounter with Jesus, because that is the critical cycle in which we grow as radically passionate, intentional, risk-taking, extravagant followers of Jesus. One is when we engage ourselves in acts of mercy 
as God invites us to. Wasn't it Jesus who said in Matthew 25, 31, he tells the story of the parable of the sheep and the goats. And, and the question is asked by those who were welcomed by God into the kingdom of heaven. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe our question 2,000 years later, when we don't have that one-to-one -one connection like the first disciples. When did we give you clothes when we were naked? When did we visit you when you were in prison? When did we give you food when you were hungry? When did we come and see you when you were sick? And Jesus' response was, as you did it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it to me. That encounter. I was invited to come to the Southside Community Center to share in a ministry a church was doing there. This ministry was holding birthday parties once a month for the kids at the Southside Community Center. You see, you got to understand the life of these kids. 80% of these kids came from single parent homes, most of them single mothers, and all of the, all of the problems and struggles that go with that. This was an area of the city in which the highest population of low-income people lived. And this church was holding birthday parties once a month for the kids, just so that they could feel like someone loved them and cared for them. If they never felt that somewhere else, they would feel it right there. And, and they would gather around and, and have decorations, and the cake would be brought out, and ice cream, and they'd sing happy birthday. And then they would play games together and talk. And one adult told me how an 11-year-old girl told her in the game time, I've never had a birthday party in my life. When they were waiting for the cake to come forward and the plates to be brought, all the kids were asked to wait until everyone got served because they were suddenly teaching manners at the same time and didn't want the kids to know it. And after the plates were gathered around the adults, one of the adults said to the other adults in the room, who would like to pray before we eat? And it wasn't an adult who raised her hand, it was this girl sitting at the table who raised her hand and said, I'll pray. And in this beautiful, childlike prayer, all the adults in the room started looking at each other with tears in their eyes. And you could see the question on their hearts, is this heaven? Maybe we encounter Christ when we allow ourselves to be touched by God and to be engaged in relationships of meaning with others. I was reading a, a, uh, a post by Scott Johnson, who's the annual conference lay leader for the Upper New York Annual Conference, and he was reflecting in his Facebook page the other day about his grief. He had one of those experiences in his life where we say after it's over, gosh, I wish I had taken time. I wish I had said I love you or embrace them or I'm sorry or I really like you or I really appreciate you. He wrote this. He said, today I found out that a colleague with whom I have shared, my great con with whom I have shared great conversations and many laughs, from whom I learned many lessons, died unexpectedly last night. I sat behind him at a presentation on Tuesday this past week. A couple of hours before catching my flight, we made eye contact, but we didn't speak. And from my standpoint, it was one of those unavoidable assumptions that there would be another time to catch up. And although we weren't the closest of friends, my heart hurts tremendously as I replay that fleeting second, wishing that I had made better use of it. How many of us have not been in that very same place? If I just take more time or, or stop long enough to say I'm sorry or I love you. Because we know how fleeting life is. And another way to encounter and welcome thin space is to encounter the very presence of Jesus. It can happen right here. In this space. I, I experienced it right before Easter on Monday, Thursday service. That Thursday before Easter, we were gathering out of the welcome area, having uh, hand washing and communion. But just an hour and a half before that service started, one of the boilers started leaking water, and I discovered it after it had been going all day. 
And so everything was wet over there. And of course, you know, I'm in there looking at it and I'm, you know, very highly distracted. At the same time, people are coming in. Thank God Charlie Kyson was able to come and take care of it. And Sally and Jerry sacrificed their service in order to work with them. But my mind and heart was still distracted by that whole event. You know, I, I didn't find myself in that place during communion. And I sat in the sanctuary as we came in here for the scripture readings and, and the... And the unlighting of the candles and and I'm still distracted and full I'm not in that place and then all of a sudden I don't know if it was Jeannie or Thomas who were reading the passage and the light went out and then the choir started singing and Laura Bishop started playing clarinet or oh clarinet, clarinet thank you I get those wrong and, and all of a sudden I shifted or God shifted me and I wasn't distracted anymore I I found myself asking that question, is this heaven? I found myself in a very thin place. And so I invite you and encourage you to open your heart to this Emmaus encounter, to these thin places, to those places in life that we often will pass by if we don't pay attention and, and, and forget about if we don't make time for where God becomes very real to us. Maybe it's uh, when you're at the checkout line at the grocery store and you take time and say, hello, and God bless you to the register lady and, or man. Or maybe you're out on the field and your kids are running around and they're playing soccer or they're dancing and they're in this powerful moment and you say to yourselves, thank you, God. This feels like heaven for a moment in time. Or maybe it's just when you take a morsel of bread and a piece of juice and it feels like for just that moment in time, this is a very thin place and Jesus is here. I didn't see him when I came in. Oh boy, he's here now. Let us pray. So we come before your table, oh God. This is a full service. So many good things. So many celebrations. And we came in all kinds of different mindsets and distractions and responsibilities and burdens and hopes and expectations and and it's very thin in here. May our hearts resonate with your frequency. May the gift of bread, your life poured out for us, touch us. May the forgiveness poured out for us through your body and blood, through your presence and grace, fill us. And may the time just seem to pass in a way that fills us for this week ahead. And all God's people said,